Hey guys, my name is Michael Watson and today I'll be telling you how to use the EQ3 audio effect in Ableton Live. So I've got a track playing over here and what I can do is I can either drag in my EQ3 onto one of these tracks or I can use it on the master channel. I'm going to be using it on the master channel now just because it'll demonstrate the effect a lot better. So under audio effects, go to EQ3 and just put it in. Okay, so now what is an EQ? EQ is short for equalizer and it allows you to attenuate or boost certain frequencies. People use this to help get a clearer mix and bring out certain tonal qualities in any samples or recordings that they have so that the production sounds more polished, more spacious, more clear, better as a whole. There are a lot of different EQs out there and a lot of them do similar things, but many of them have a unique sound and in this case EQ3 has a unique sound because it is actually modeled on an old analog equalizer. So even if you use this EQ3 and you don't actually boost or attenuate anything over here, your audio is still going to sound slightly different because it is based on this analog model. Alright, so you don't have that many knobs, you've got your gain low, mid high, which refers to your low frequencies, your mid frequencies, and your high frequencies. They've each got this little circle over here, which is an LED, and it'll light up when any of those three frequency spectra have any audio in them. So while I'm playing, you can see a lot of mid, a bit of high when the hi-hats hit, a bit of low with a kick drum. Now at the bottom here you've got frequency low and frequency high and this determines what EQ3 decides is your low, mid or high. So frequency low is set to 250 hertz and in everything under 250 hertz is low. Everything between 250 hertz and this 2.5 kilohertz is mid and everything above this frequency high are your high spectra. Then your 24 and 48 are your decibel filter switches and these two impact the cutoff slope. The higher setting, so this 48 dB, results in a more drastic slope which means more drastic filtering as opposed to a smoother cutoff. You've also got these options and say the auto filter which in this graphic display actually shows you the effect of the slope a little bit as you can see. If I pull it down it's a bit more obvious. Alright, now so what do these knobs do? They either boost or attenuate these frequencies. So what I've done now is all the low frequencies, so anything under this knob, this frequency low knob, everything under 250 hertz will now be 4.1 decibels louder. Everything in mid I've randomly made minus 8.92 decibels softer and mid will be between this 250 and 2.5 kilohertz because that's what I've set my knobs to. You can change that. And then my high frequencies have changed here to 6 decibels. Now these aren't good settings. I don't suggest you do that. I'm just showing you for demonstration. Now these three knobs over here are like mini bypasses. They actually turn these frequency bands on or off. So if you want all your mids gone, you can turn them off. And even if you've turned them off, these LEDs will still show you if there should have been audio there. So everything's off, but you can still kind of see where the audio lies in the frequency spectrum. Okay, so you can use this for mixing, but you can actually also use it as an analysis tool. A lot of great mixing engineers out there advise you to take your spectral analyzer and kind of look at it as audio passes through to change your bands and your notches and hear how that affects your audio so that you can train your ear. Now, if you take this a step back. If that's a bit too intimidating, you can actually use EQ3 and just get familiar with your low, mid and highs. And you can change these settings over here to train your ear and get familiar with frequencies below a certain point, between two points and above a certain point. So let's have a look. So my music's playing, everything's bypassed. Let's only listen to the mids. And let's keep it at zero for now. So the majority of my piano sound isn't there, I can hear a little bit of the snare. Now on the highs, I would be expecting to hear the hi-hat. It also flashes out the piano a bit, gives it a bit of a fuller, brighter sound. sounds a little bit muted as though you're talking through a megaphone and that's what happens when your lows are missing. If you've only got your lows, you can barely hear the piano, you can basically just hear the kick drum. But you can still see that the piano and the hi-hat are supposed to be playing. 
Now, if you put this on your audio, it's probably going to look very different. This particular track doesn't have a bass line. That's why in this low shelf, you can only really hear your kick drum. Now, if I make this very small, the area between your low and your mid, and I take the mid out, it doesn't have as drastic an effect. If I max out the distance between these two, you can basically just hear a tiny little bit of the kick drum and virtually no hi-hat. And that's how to use EQ3. If you want to learn more about the other audio effects, hit subscribe because I'm doing a video like this on each and every one of them in Ableton Live. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.